Hey guys, Moan Pobert here with another video. And today's video is all about how much money do you actually need in order to buy a business. So let's get to it. So to begin with, there are a few costs to buy a business. And yeah, don't forget if you didn't yet uh, subscribe to the channel, we're growing slowly but surely. I, I love to get, uh, I love all the feedback that I'm getting from you guys. I'm getting tons of emails, messages here on Facebook. Uh, so keep them going. Just tell me whatever you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What questions do you have? This is what this is for. This is for you guys. This is me documenting my journey, but answering your questions. So yeah, let, get, let me know what, what you want to hear about and uh, definitely hit the notification button if you didn't yet. So you will get notified about every future video that I create. So there are a few costs. We'll separate them into, I guess, few sec few sections. I don't know what's going on with my English today, but yeah, to begin with, the first cost is just the cost for your search. So whenever you're gonna search for a business, um, there is some cost. Obviously, you can pretty much make it free, but there is some cost you need to be aware of. Uh, we're gonna get into that. So pretty much everything you're gonna spend when you search for the business. That's, I guess, the first uh, category of um, money you're gonna spend when, when preparing to buy a business. The second cost you need to be aware of is costs for professionals. So that can be anywhere from accountants, lawyers, consultants, or just any advisor or pretty much, I guess, any professional or a person that you need to use in order to, uh, I guess, move towards buying your deal. And even those costs, and we're going to get into it, can be, I guess, structured in a way where you only pay when, the, I guess, the action is being successful. Another category for, uh, I guess, part of your cost is obviously cost for the deal or what, I guess, what you're gonna pay for the business. Obviously, you don't have to use your money, like I said in other videos and watch them if you didn't yet. You can use, I guess, financial institutions, capital, or you can use other, I guess, investors or private wealthy individuals to bring capital into your deals. So that's another category of cost, just cost for what you're gonna pay for the business. And then the fourth category, I guess, is everything that's involved in working capital, growing the business, or pretty much any costs that's involved after you buy the business, what you're gonna do. And we'll dive into that a bit as well. So to begin with, let's start with the costs for searching, I guess, searching for your deal. So even for that, like I know people who raised capital from investors in order to do the search. So pretty much they, raise some, I guess, a pool of capital and then use that to pay themselves some kind of a salary and to use that to go out there and approach businesses. There is not, I guess, not too many expenses when you search for the business, but it's up to you on how much you want to put time. I guess you can include travel costs and flights if you're going to look for deals internationally and even sending letters can cost you some money. Um, but you don't have to, in my opinion, I wouldn't spend I guess time on going out there to raise capital for your search. I think it's great to build network of investors who will put money into your deals eventually. And if you think it's a good way to start your relationship with them, to go out there and raise some capital, I guess for the search part, then I think it's it might be worth checking out. But other than that, yeah, I, personally, I just wouldn't spend too much time with that. I think it's better for you to go look for a deal and then obviously at the same time look for investors, but go to those investors with a deal already. Don't, if you just come in and tell them, hey, look, I wanna look for businesses, please pay me for my search, but you don't really focus on what deal you want and the exact type of returns that you can show them, investors won't look at you in a good way to, to say it in a, in, a nice, in a nice way. In my opinion, when you start, you wanna be as frugal as possible. You wanna hire interns if you can, just bring in interns to work for you for free, ideally full time. And I think it's great for them because they can basically use that as some kind of experience in the business world. They can literally do work for you for free. Like I know interns who work like literally a full time job for free for people and you can tell them to do whatever you want. You can tell them to send letters, to get in touch with business owners, to do cold calls, to go to events even. Uh, but uh, ideally you want to do those things when you want to go to events, but anything else you can just let those interns do for you. When you begin, don't go and, don't go and get like an expensive office or something like that. I see, see that especially in the startup world, people go raise capital from investors or from a VC firm and they just go and get the coolest office ever. I think, especially in this space, when you're going to look for a business, don't spend, if you're going to raise capital or not, don't use your own money to go and, and get an expensive office. It's just, 
Yeah, just waste of money. Wait until you have a legit business, then get an office. Don't pay too much money for an office just to, to think you're cool or successful. Now let's talk about professionals, lawyers, accountants. I know people who bankrupt literally just from paying too much for accountants and lawyers on trying to do M&A deals. You can pay a lot of unnecessary funds for deals that you didn't close because even deals that you think you're gonna close, many of them won't close eventually just because the seller can literally decide one day that you don't wanna sell the business anymore and you just can't control it, but you need to pay the accountants and lawyers throughout the process. So if you don't know how to structure the right type of agreements with accountants and lawyers, you can pay a lot of unnecessary money that can cost you a small fortune. You wanna make sure that when you work with those professionals, you only work on success fees or basically you pay them when they after you close the deal you only pay them if and when you close the deal and if you don't close the deal you basically tell them okay we didn't close that deal we'll pay you after we close the next deal otherwise you can literally bankrupt now if you don't know how to approach accountants lawyers things like that or you just want to have i guess some kind of a back behind you when you're going to talk to business owners or want to buy businesses um see the description below i know people message me they want to be part of my I guess be my partner or learn with me or work with me or look for deals for us. We have a way where we work with people like that, where you can watch our back, learn the process, and then we can share equity in deals. So if that's something you want to explore, see the description below and, and get in touch. In general, when, when you decide to get into the space of doing deals, I think if you decide to do it full time, if you decide, hey, I don't want to work, I want to focus fully on this until I find the business that I want to buy, I'd say make sure you have, let's say, savings for at least one year, just because you want to make sure that you're not doing things in a rushed way. You want to come from an abundance place and in a place where you don't need a deal, you want a deal, and that's where you'll get the good deals. Otherwise, if you're in a rush to just get an income as soon as possible because you don't know where you're going to pay your, your next rent, your next month rent, you're going to look for the wrong deals. You're going to, I guess, even in your negotiation, things will look from you'll come from a bad place and then just deals won't work. You want to make sure when you look for deals, you're coming from a place where you don't need those deals. That's why I also suggest, suggest to always look for a few deals at the same time. You don't want to go for just one deal and have all your life dependent on that. And you just got to make it work and start to make money yesterday for me. You want to have savings aside. You want to make sure you're coming from a place where you're not in a rush to do that deal. And ideally you want to work on a few deals at the same time. So even if one deal won't go through, you know, you have other deals and it's also going to give you a leverage when you negotiate with a business owner, you basically tell them, Hey, look, if you don't want to do the deal in the way that I want, in the terms that I want, I have other deals I'm working on and I'm going to move on. So you always want to come from that point of view where saying, Hey, I don't need you. I want you pretty much for those who do decide to raise capital from investors. I guess what you can do is basically tell them, hey, look, first of all, you're going to look at the deals first. I'll give you first option. Plus, you can translate the money that you raise from them for, for the search of those deals. You can basically tell them, hey, look, as soon as we find a deal, we'll translate the capital that we raised for the search into equity in those deals. So it's a win-win for everyone if you approach things that way versus you just tell them, hey, look, I'm going to raise capital for you and then just... What I'm trying to say here, if you're going to decide to raise capital for your search fund, make sure you have really a win-win scenario for everyone. And I think a good way to do it is just to tell them, hey, look, here's the capital I want for the search. But as soon as we find a deal, that capital that I raised from you will translate into equity in those deals. And you need to understand it's a win-win for everyone because you basically put the time, you put the talent, talent you put the work, you do all the research, you do, you do the work, they just put the money. They obviously can help in other ways if you want. But you need to understand when you come to investors, you need to feel or, or I guess even rationalize or understand the fact that you give them the opportunity to make money. And it, it, again, it's coming from a place, hey, I'm doing you a favor and I'm bringing you into amazing, amazing deals. Don't think that, hey, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm going to try try to make take money from people. It, it, it's really a win-win scenario for everyone when you raise capital. Uh, investors have money. They're looking for great opportunities or great places to put their money into and you just give them that, that option. Now, if you decided to go that route, you can, I'd say to begin with, start with the people you know and people are afraid to go for the people they know, the friends or family. I said it in other videos, I'll say it again now. If you're afraid to go to your family to raise capital from, it means that you don't believe in yourself or you're dealing enough. So I guess change that because again, remember, you're giving them the opportunity. 
Now remember, all you need to begin with is just to find 10 or 15 people. Let's say you have 10 people around you that you raise 50 grand from each. That's 500,000 you can work with and make a lot of progress with that and buy an amazing business with that 500,000. Let's say you're using like 100,000 for your salary, for more expenses if you want to go to events, flights, accommodations, all that stuff. Let's say you take 100,000 for that. You have 400,000 more to work with to buy a business. That can be an amazing business that you're buying with $400,000 if you are able to raise that capital. When you go and try to raise that capital, and I'm talking that can be for your search fund or just for your deals in general, remember that getting the first investors is key. Like when you get the first one, it's going to build momentum. It's going to convince, convince his friends to bring money to your deals. And it's just going to get to a point where it's all positive. You're all looking to do those deals. People are in a rush to get into your deals because they know that others are into it as well already. And there is not much time for them to decide if they're going to get into it or not. So remember, get your first investor. That's going to put you into the, the best positive uh, path as soon as possible. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, if you like it, subscribe. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. I know we talked more about how we raise capital, what we need to raise capital for, what expenses in general we have for the businesses. So anywhere from searching the deal, professionals, obviously then when you buy the business, you'll need that capital to grow the business or even some of that capital that you raise, you can take home. So that's a very common thing in acquisitions. When you raise capital, you take some money at completion to yourself just for doing the work. Um, so yeah, all those are expenses to to be aware of and to be prepared for when you're looking to buy a business. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you soon.